for Magenta to win. This timeline begins during Gamma 2's fight with Piccolo. Instead of just assuming that he killed Piccolo, he stays behind to see if Piccolo was dead, which he would see he wasn't, so he would then finish off in the Mechian. Without Piccolo's involvement, no one would know what was going on until it was time for him to pick up Pan. Since he never shown up, and they couldn't get a hold of Piccolo, they might have noticed that something is amiss. Regardless, Magenta still would have a soldier try to kidnap Pan, but that would fail, so they might send the Gamma to do it, which Pan wouldn't stand a chance in resisting them. From there, Gohan would likely still be brought to the base to try and rescue Pan, but since he would be fighting alone when he starts to use his ultimate form, both Gammas take him on. He wouldn't stand a chance against the two of them and would be killed as well. Of course, Magenta would then send the Gammas to take on and kill the other heroes. This would include Goku and Vegeta when they arrive on Earth. Now, it's hard to say if the Gammas could beat Goku and Vegeta, but it's possible they could. Since Gohan himself said that even if they were there, he might not have been able to win. Piccolo also made a comment in the manga about their power being at least equal to Goku and Vegeta's. Regardless, after all the heroes and their allies were killed, Magenta would be able to rebuild the Red Ribbon Army like he wanted to. He would also likely keep Dr. Hedo and his androids on his side. Though, when it comes to Pan, they wouldn't be able to have her killed, as the Gammas would then turn against them. So, Pan might be raised by the new Red Ribbon Army and eventually become part of it. Regardless, with the Gammas on his side, he would be able to conquer the world like he had wanted to. However, he would also have to continue playing along with the act that they're heroes, so that the Gammas and Dr. Hedo stay on his side. As well as the Gammas that won, they never have a reason to awaken Cell Max. So, Magenta eventually becomes the ruler of the world, as no one would be able to stop the Red Ribbon Army. This chapter is based on Dr. Hedo winning, which this time would go basically the same as the previous chapter. In the movie, he mentioned how he knew he was being used, but he didn't do anything about it. In this timeline, after Magenta wins, Dr. Hedo eventually decides to go against Magenta. He might do this since he realizes that his actions are going against his ideals of being a superhero. Regardless, Magenta wouldn't be able to stop the Gammas or Dr. Hedo when they tried to overthrow him, so they would be able to defeat him before he could awaken Cell Max. As for what Dr. Hedo would do after taking control of the Red Ribbon Army, it isn't likely he would want to take over the world. Instead, he would just continue his android project to continue to make the ultimate androids. He would also use his androids to rid the world of any evil he's seen to keep up his ideals of being a superhero. So, while he didn't want to be the ruler of the world, people might end up fearing him since he was using his androids to defeat anyone that went against his ideals. Regardless, he would stay in power for the rest of his life since no one could defeat his androids. In the timeline where Cell Max wins, the chance for how he could win is a simple but funny one. If both Krillin and Piccolo forgot about his gigantification technique, he would never have been able to stop himself from being crushed to death. So, Piccolo is crushed to death, which obviously this would anger Gohan more. Though with Piccolo dead, Gohan would obviously not know about the sensu being in Piccolo's belt. So, even though he would still unlock his beast form, since he isn't at his full power, his attack likely wouldn't work. This means that Cell Max's energy ball would be able to hit Gohan and would kill him. It would also probably go further than that, as it would destroy the planet too. Assuming Cell Max is like Cell, he would be able to survive this explosion and survive in space. Which, he is a mindless creature that was only seen trying to destroy whatever or whoever he saw. So, he might begin a rampage around the universe as he mindlessly destroys things. Even if Goku and Vegeta end up confronting him on a planet, they would likely lose too. I'm only basing that on Gohan's quote about how even if they were there, they likely would have lost as well. Regardless, Cell Max would continue his rampage of mindless destruction up until he was either stopped somehow or there was nothing left to destroy. Thank you.